This is bullshit. <laughs> what is it? This is bullshit. I read in Forbes magazine the other day that women are twice as likely to live in poverty after retirement than men. Twice as likely. That's a future I don't want. Things I Learned in My 40s, a part 10. Dating over 40 is hard as hell. We know too much about ourselves and what we think we want. But sometimes what we think we want is not really what we want. It's just what feels comfortable. And this is why we keep finding that we keep attracting the same type of people and in the same types of relationships that have the same unhappy ending. And I've found that in order to break the cycle, you have to do the work and heal from within. And that is a lifelong journey. This is the fifth video I've made where I've been blasted in comments being called a hag, elderly, a grandma, that I'm 90, that I'm aged beyond repair. That's a good one. I'm in my 50s and I've chosen to age naturally so I don't get Botox or any injections of any kind, no surgeries or lifts, no fillers or lasers or any kind of injections. What I do wear is silicone patches because I like to be able to have expression in my face but I don't want to make my wrinkles deeper. This is particularly for my frown lines on my forehead because I think they make me look angry and for my mouth lines that make me look sad. And yes, I am sad right now and angry, but that's just because it's I've been inundated with just really cruel comments and being stitched all over TikTok as some sort of reason that women can't age. Well, meanwhile, I am aging naturally. I just don't want deeper lines or lines that don't put out there what I feel inside. Everything about making a video like this is outside of my comfort zone because I hate confrontation. I was always told to turn the other cheek and just ignore it, but it's just so much all the time that I actually think inaction is... Um, not the right thing to do. And for all these people asking why can't women just age, well, with the rest of the comments telling me how I'm hideous, I think you've sort of answered your own question. And the shut up and just age gracefully to a 50 year old woman, um, no. And as for me being any reason why women can't age when there's plastic surgeons telling people to get surgery and lifts and there's dermatologists telling people as early as 18 to get Botox that's not on me and I am not the beauty industry but mostly I'm making this video because you don't tell someone in their 50s how they should or shouldn't age it's not your business and you can't yet as a 15 year old speak to the experience of your face sagging and you your skin doesn't look like how you feel on the inside. This is the reality for most women today, especially modern women who lived life in the fast lane. Working a career, screwing like there's no tomorrow, drinking like a sailor, it all eventually catches up. They hit the wall at 30, maybe a second wall at 40, and then they fall off a cliff at 50 when they go through menopause. And this is the dark underbelly and reality of feminism in the gynocentric West. They can cope all they want, that they're quote-unquote so much happier being single at the age of 50 and beyond, but at the end of the day, they cry themselves to sleep because they're invisible to most men, because they know it's over. This lady is getting a taste of what she probably dished out in her younger years, or at least most modern women do when they, for example, make fun of short men or 
use men that they aren't attracted to for free relationship benefits, or outright tell men that they're ugly or thirsty. If post walls don't want to be made fun of on the internet, like the saying goes, if you can't handle the heat, stay out of the kitchen. They literally have. No one is forcing this post wall to post on social media, yet she thinks because she's a woman and older, she should be a sacred cow and be spared by the honest and harsh judgment of the internet. And that's what today's article is about, where finally an established news outlet is covering the MGTOW reality of double and triple post wall women. That it's not all SEX in the city like the mainstream media has claimed it to be. It's written on the New York Times, the number one most famous feminist so-called newspaper in the world. Mostly post walls and manginas read it, or I should say believe what's written in it. It's like the feminist bible. Before we go on with the video, let me share the comment of the day. Shout out to Zeleth Zyvin, who shares, It deeply disgusts me to see a grown adult crying on camera that they recorded themselves. This is vile and wicked attempts of manipulation. These people don't know what shame even means. And that's precisely why we gotta bring back shaming. So thanks for sharing that comment, and don't forget to reach out to my email to claim your five bucks. As always guys, I'll be checking out the comments and picking one from each video. Could be the funniest, or just the most liked, or just one that stuck out to me. So don't forget to leave a comment, and you could be tomorrow's winner. So be sure to hit that like and sub button too, as the support helps out a ton, y'all. So now let's get right back into the video. Embrace your masculinity. So the title is, Online Dating After 50 Can Be Miserable, But It's Also Liberating. At least part of the title has some truth. That's a first for feminists. Liberating part is cope. I guess knowing that no one wants you anymore is liberating in the sense it's not a shock or a surprise anymore that the free trial of easy mode has ended. And the subtitle is, You know so much more about yourself and your desires when you're older than dating apps, even with all their frustrations, can bring unanticipated pleasure. Translation, you have higher standards even though you're wanted almost by no one except for grandpas. By Maggie Jones. Maggie Jones previously wrote a feature about SEX after 70 for the magazine. She is herself in the over 50 dating demographic. So clearly she's a post wall who's a bed wench. I'm going to probably skip a lot of this because it looks super long and you know most feminist writers repeat themselves at least three to four times. These bird brains have the memory of a goldfish where it seems like they forget what they just wrote five seconds ago. Anyway, let's get balls deep into this article. When my marriage collapsed after 23 years, I was devastated and overwhelmed. I was in my 50s with two jobs, two teenage daughters, one dog. I didn't consider dating. I had no time, no emotional energy, but then a year passed. One daughter was off at college, the other increasingly independent. After several more months went by, I started to feel a sliver of curiosity about what kind of men were out there and how it would feel to date again. The last time I dated was 25 years ago, and even then, I fell into relationships mostly with guys from high school, college, parties, and work. Now, every man I knew was either married, too young, too old, or otherwise not a good fit. I wonder what she looks like first. To be honest, at least she's not fat. I guess for her age, she looks decent if that's not an old photo of her. That being said, she's old and bitter, and to most men, probably insufferable, because she thinks just because she writes for an established feminist rag that her opinions are important. I'm not surprised her marriage collapsed. Career, super educated women are more likely to get divorced than any other demographic. It's not that men don't want an accomplished woman, it's that men don't want to deal with a disagreeable boss bitch that spends all of her time chasing uh, excellence, climbing a corporate ladder. You know, the notion that toxic feminism says things like, you know, go and get a career and take care of yourself so you don't need a man, basically says, Go and serve a man in the corporate world, lie in his pockets with gold, but don't serve a family or a husband at home. Continuing. That meant online dating, the default mode, not just for the young, but also for people my age. My only exposure had been watching my oldest daughter, home from college one summer as she sat on her bed rapidly swiping through guy after guy, spending no more than a second or two on each. Wait, I kept saying, slow down, how do you know? What's wrong with him or him? Not surprising, her daughter is very single and her standards are much higher. She's probably part of some Chad's rotation. The mother sounds more realistic, but that's because she's not young anymore, and she's making a virtue out of necessity. I highly doubt she gave average guys a chance in her prime. Okay, I took a survey on the type of men that women over 50 wanted to date, and these are the results. 
Um, if you get a chance when I asked about that survey, the comment section is hilarious. Lots of banter, very interesting stuff. I was truly surprised at how many women said that at over 50 that they weren't interested in dating and they were happier by themselves. A lot of women said that they wanted somebody with at least as much money as they had. Um, some women said they wanted a rich man, but a lot said they just didn't want anybody who had significantly less money than they did. It was mentioned a few times too that women wanted a man who was passionate, somebody who still had working equipment. And the number one thing that women mentioned was a sense of humor, someone who made them laugh. So if you have something to add to this, I'd be glad to hear it. Please write in the comments. Um, I've made other videos about men and what type of people are available to date over 50. Um, some women did say that they wanted younger men too, which surprised me because I myself am not interested in younger men. But a lot of women said that worked out better for them. Back to the article. Soon enough, I signed on to Match and then the dating apps Bumble and Hinge. And over the past 18 months, I felt waves of excitement Hope, frustration, boredom, discouragement. I've gone on great and not so great dates, had relationships and ended them, paused and restarted apps over and over again. Translation, she slept around with some men but realized her real SMV or RMV, which is relationship market value, wasn't that high because she's old. Most post walls think restarting the dating apps will somehow give them a different result, but it only makes them look more desperate to the men on those apps when they see the same woman with new profiles. Guys are very simple, right? Like guys are very, very easy to please. If you have an enthusiastic, generally attractive woman, they usually get like, you know, the post-divorce breast augmentation done. So they got like the tailor-made titties going on and everything looks good sort of thing. Like just touch their pee, pee and they'll fall for you, right? Younger guys fall for it all the time. And it's a trap, you know, it's the Soul Crusher 3000 is what I call it. So, you know, try it out, have some fun if you need to, explore some options, but do not, do not make a long-term relationship out of it. Do not marry her. Cause I'm telling you like you're 27 now, but when you're 37, she's going to be 51 and women go downhill rapidly when they hit menopause. Right. And that happens for some women in their early forties, sometimes, you know, their early fifties, but somewhere in and around that 10 to 15 year mark, her, her looks are, are going to decline rapidly. And if we're being honest, like a woman's value to a guy is her fertility, you know, like can, like can she bring him children? And there's absolutely no way you're going to get that from an older woman. Back to the article. Online dating is a mixed bag for most people. Queer, hetero, non-binary, plenty of them do find love, including on their very first match. But many of us have to swim through a dispiriting sea of hundreds of people, most of whom we are unlikely to ever want to date. That includes profiles that are fake, created by scammers to try to lure private information from users. And while most profiles are real, sometimes their photos are not so much. More than one person told me that photos can be so outdated or filtered that they barely recognize their date when they met. And the writing is often littered with cliches, looking for a partner in crime. I will make you laugh. I live life to the fullest. Then there's the irritating experience of seeing the people you already declined pop up again and again and again. She's saying most of the men on the dating apps don't fit her standards, which is not surprising. I wonder how her ex is doing. Probably much better than she is since he's probably established and seasoned. If you subscribe to a equalist mindset where we make the same amount of money, and that's one of the things that he points out is, you know, she has a good job and she makes the same amount of money, which is interesting because women are always, you know, all about feminism and, you know, we need to be equal and everybody gets paid the same for the same job and all that sort of stuff, which is fine. But when the bill comes, you know, they're busy looking at their phone or doing their makeup in a mirror. As tough as the process can be, older women have it worse than most. They report more negative online dating experiences compared with men of all ages and younger women according to a Pew Center for Research study. That may in part be because of their dearth of choices. The pool of men narrows with time. Men's life expectancy is seven years shorter than women's. That's a laugh. Older women are finally experiencing what most men go through, yet they act like they're the center of the universe, and now it's a problem that they can't have access to the top men as they used to have. Welcome to being a man, feminist. So you said that there are things that men can do to like level up, like they can become funny or have a good personality or become successful. Yes. The difference is, is that women, you can just be 18 and be attractive or not even be physically attractive and still get like insane amounts of dicks. We had one girl say that she had a sex addiction and she was like overweight, no offense to her, but I'm just stating the facts here. Don't shoot the messenger. She happened to be overweight. She wasn't particularly good looking. She was able to sleep with six guys in the night. 
She slept with six dudes in a night. Her body count was 140. Her male looks equivalent would be incapable of doing doing that exact same thing. Then there's the reality that men tend to date younger women, a desire that online dating makes vividly quantifiable. In a 2018 study, researchers analyzed anonymized message exchanges between more than 186,000 straight men and women from a public and large online dating platform. Researchers didn't name which one. Women get the most attention from men, measured by the number of first messages a person receives, when they are 18. Yes, 18, when they have barely crossed into adulthood, if you consider 18 an adult. This is like always in fake concern out of jealousy. These feminist post walls have no problem when 18-year-olds join OnlyFans because it's so-called empowering to destroy their future for fast, easy money. Yet they have a problem with men wanting the most attractive women out there. Suddenly, these same 18-year-olds are like kids, despite them being themselves choosing the older men because the older men have resources and are more confident and competent. Of course, women are not going to find you as attractive as the man who has his shit sorted out at the end of the day. The man who has been putting in the work for X amount of years. He is a veteran. He's in his early, mid, late 30s and beyond. This man is established in his career. Finances are on point. He has his nice car, many vehicles, dream car, dream apartment, dream house. He has the fashion on point, the groom and the scent. Every aspect is on point. Why? Because he has had way more time to get his shit together skipping one wednesday afternoon over zoom from her living room in manhattan the anthropologist helen fisher author of anatomy of love a natural history of mating marriage and why we stray told me she is hopeful about online dating as you age despite the stereotypes older women are not desperate older women are desperate because they're the ones who are usually scammed the most from online dating skipping Michael Rosenfeld, a sociologist at Stanford University whose research areas include mating and dating and the internet's effect on society, says the discrepancy is partly because, as numerous studies confirm, women tend to be less satisfied in heterosexual marriage. And there it is, proof that modern women are never happy by a professor at a top university. Why? Because you can't turn an HOE into a housewife and most females in the West are bed wenches. I'm willing to bet that if the study distinguished traditional women from modern women and feminists that only traditional women, especially ones who lose their virginity to their husband after marriage, are the happiest. While the feminist bedwenches are the most miserable in marriage, but they won't make the distinguish because the feminists would go apeshit if it held their actions accountable. You can't make a woman happy. It's impossible. I've never met a happy woman in my life. Women always complaining about something. Shit, women like to complain. Women save up shit to complain about. Oh, he don't even know I know, but I'm gonna get his ass on that shit next month. Skipping some more. It's what Jenny Young, a professor of English and Women and Gender Studies at University of Wisconsin Green Bay, calls the Are You My Mother problem. In a Facebook post, she used the example of a man answering the online dating prompt, We'll get along if dot dot dot, by writing, You feed me and are more mature than I, lol. Gender studies is a fake degree useless. All right, let's say you get your gender studies degree at Whitman College. This is an expensive ass school. You'd think they'd get you a good job after college, right? You know, preparing you with great classes like problems with privilege and this one, 328. Well, according to them, you can either go back to school, be an activist, or a plethora of other careers. So it's not surprising she's confusing and conflating a wife or girlfriend's role by being a mother. A traditional woman cooks for her husband and family. And this is why these feminists are single, because the men they're after aren't looking for a roommate or partner, but someone who gives them the girlfriend experience or just wants a young bimbo to enjoy their retirement with. Skipping. Still, Young, who is 53 and divorced herself, wants to improve the dating experience for women and non-binary people by helping them learn how to interpret dating languages. It's one way older women can catch up to Gen Z women who are better versed in online rhetoric, Young says. Older women were already partnered when online dating began and missed the dating app revolution. Not surprising the gender studies professor is single and divorced. And what she's saying is massive cope and just plain stupid. There's no secret language that will somehow give them the edge. The bottom line is that men just want young, hot women who aren't 304s and aren't a raging B-I-T-C-H. It's that simple.
I really think don't. the reason men don't value education and money in women is because women who tend to have, who tend to be educated and have money, they tend to be, have that independent attitude. You feel me? Like, so that's why I feel like men don't care about that no more. So they'll take somebody that's less educated, less money because. I feel like you shouldn't want that though. You should want somebody yeah, that but you can't tell, really you can't tell men what they should want. Young and I bonded, as I did with other women, over our shared exasperation with so many men's profiles, filled with selfies at the gym in which they were holding dumbbells and flexing, or in bathroom mirrors, sometimes with urinals behind them. The woman told me about a bathroom pic with a bra dangling from the shower rod, and the fish. So many men holding fish either because fishing is a favorite hobby or a display of masculinity, or both, who knows. These men are just men. She lives in Wisconsin, the state. If she wants males who wear dresses, maybe she should move to a feminist hellhole like Portland, Oregon, or San Francisco. Continuing. For Young, trying to figure out how to date better and more efficiently started one night three years ago when she was feeling pitiful about her own experiences online, rife with misogyny and cliched nonsense. She did a Google search for, how do you find a needle in a haystack? The answer? Burn the haystack to the ground. Only the metal needle will remain. Translation, man wanted actual traditional women, not pink-haired feminists who look like your middle-aged uncle. And of course she was looking for the feminist chads who are in super high demand with all the feminists. Hard. And we're gonna have to work at this every day, but I wanna do that because I want you. I want all of you, forever, you and me, every day. <laughs> but it wasn't complete. It wasn't nearly close to being. She decided to try it as a dating method. Instead of widening her filters and her tastes, which some dating advisors suggest, she became choosier about men and their styles of communication. She responded only if they sent her a clear, personalized message. And if she wasn't interested in a man, she didn't just swipe left or X out his profile. She blocked or removed him, which isn't the same as reporting someone for inappropriate behavior. The goal was to prevent further messages and reduce the odds those men would reappear in her feed and waste more of her time. Basically, she wrote a profile bio that would only attract the feminist men out there. Skipping. Young credited her method for her successful match, and last year she started a Facebook group called The Burned Haystack Dating Method, which now has about 50,000 followers. She also has an Instagram account where she dispenses advice. As she wrote in one article about the strategy, dating is a numbers game, but the typical goal, to be widely appealing and meet as many men as possible, is wasting women's time and leaving us frustrated and demoralized. She's still single, yet there are 50,000 women who followed her. Talk about the blind leading the blind. Continuing. At first, she mostly drew followers in their 40s, 50s, and older, but increasingly, younger women have joined. She advises women to be business-like in their approach. Translation, 30-year-olds joined the group because they screwed around and found out. So what you're trying to say, a 34-year-old woman, right, is the same as a 34-year-old yeah, guy man. that's single, and I'm telling you it's not. At 34 years old as a woman, you've pretty much exhausted most of your value. Versus a guy that's 34 years old is still building his value if he's doing the work and has more time. Again, women are given their value by mother nature and father time takes it away. For most women, yeah. Okay, well, here's the thing. You're 34 years old, you're not going to be able to compete with a girl that's 24 years old that looks just like you. The guys are going to prefer the that's younger your girl. Opinion. I mean, yeah. Again, that's your opinion. <laughs> that is not an opinion, that is a fact that well, men prefer younger good. women on average. I'll Skipping. When Francine Russo, who has been widowed twice and is now in her late 70s, began online dating, she met her second husband that way and her current partner of eight years. She initially wanted men who had the same level of education and were as financially comfortable as she was. Over time, she realized she would miss out on men who were devoted to artistic careers or who had low-paying but meaningful jobs. Who cares if he can't afford the same restaurants you like, says Russo, who is the author of Love After 50, How to Find It, Enjoy It, and Keep It. People say, I don't want to settle, she told me, but if you have someone who adores you and wants to hear about your day but doesn't have a fancy degree or a lot of money, I don't consider that settling. Wow, a woman in her 70s actually gets it. Because I'm pretty sure she wasn't a bedwench and has a body count of one because she married the man she lost her virginity to. And surprise, surprise, despite being more than twice as old as most post walls, she managed to find someone and actually be in a second relationship longer than most marriages. Imagine that. It just proves that these 304s are incapable of being happy. A woman who's closer to being a skeleton found the love of her life a second time. She actually loved a man who had less money and education than she did. These feminists and so-called dating experts need to take notes from her. That's true love. Actually loving a person. Who's happier? The girl that's got an OnlyFans or doing 
one or the woman who's living in Kashmir where I'm from uh, with her kids and family and has a purpose the girl who's doing OnlyFans these men are not going to come to your funeral no one's going to care whereas that woman who's looking after her children she's got a legacy and there's nothing more beautiful than that and you're telling me my culture is oppressive and I find your culture humiliating and so that's where my kind of anti-feminism came from because I was just constantly being told that I'm oppressed when I could not feel more liberated when I don't post like that and I don't live that lifestyle and I don't drink and I don't frivolously like date or anything like that. John, who is 65 and lives in western Massachusetts, skipping, as a successful painter, he had a flexible schedule and he had enough money to plan weekend-long trips to Boston and New York to meet women, setting up multiple dates over a couple of days, something he couldn't afford to do in his 20s. His method flew in the face of lots of dating advice. He chose women based on photos and paid less attention to what they wrote. The profile was just a way to sit across from someone and have a conversation, says John, who approached the entire endeavor with curiosity. For me it was, can I learn something here? Is there something new for me? So John finally became successful as a painter later in his life and picked the hottest females he can get. That's the male experience. He's able to wine and dine them and it worked. And of course, the so-called dating experts claim he's doing it wrong. They're straight up hating and jealous because no matter how rich these hags can get, that's not going to increase their attraction to most men. This is the difference between men and women. Men at an older age have options, so if you're getting rejected and passed up by these thoughts, just know it ends for them at 30, while it starts for you as a man. At 35, when you're finally in full stride in your career. Men will go for their entire life and remember that time that some random old lady told them they looked cute. They'll remember that for like 40 years. Men will remember a compliment forever. Like, I remember being 22 and I was hired and I was the only guy. It was me and a bunch of girls. And one of them came up to me. She goes, Adam, you're cute now, but you're going to be really handsome when you grow up. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm going to You still I'm remember it. You still I remember still it. remember when she said I was in the hallway right there. Men's self-esteem has to be self-esteem. Yeah. Has- so far, two types of people are winning the dating scene after the age of 50 a traditional woman with a body count of one, and a guy who finally succeeded in his endeavors. There you go, gents. I'm not going to read the rest. It looks like a waste of our time. Once again, bed wench is zero, us men won. That's the MGTOW reality. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get five bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, Hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.